Hello and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. This is a really, really quick video to have a look at how you can properly balance a long vertical radiator like the ones we've got here. The main reason we want to set up one of these radiators is, is because if they haven't been done properly, they can have cold spots on some of the parts of the radiator and you might not think they're working properly. So I hope this video helps you to get your radiator working properly and if you've got any problems with it after you've installed it, how to quickly fix them. Number one, if you're just about to install the radiator, make a note of the flow and return going into the radiator. It should be easy to know that if you're replacing an old one, just run the heating for a little while and you'll find out which pipe gets hottest first. That'll be your flow. Then on the bottom of your vertical radiator, very often there'll be a small sticker that will denote which way the flow should come in. If there isn't one there, have a look on the instructions and that should tell you there as well. So that's the first thing to do. Secondly, it's worth noting that there are lots of different types of manufacturers making vertical radiators. And if you look at all their individual instructions, if they need to be balanced in a certain way, that will usually be covered in their manuals. But a lot of radiators, where the flow comes in, will have a small flap just inside the radiator entrance before you put the spigot in, and this end just here, and you'll be able to push that flap down, and what that does is it pushes water straight away up to the top of the radiator on the first fin. Then the hot water can come in straight away, go up the first bar of the radiator to the top, and then cascade down equally along all the other fins going off to the return. So looking at this radiator here, we'll have the water that will come in at the bottom just here, and then we've got our little flap that's just inside this bottom pipe right here that will force our hot water to go all the way up this first vein. Then all these other veins are connected at the top here. That means hot water can then cascade down nice and equally, heating up all these fins nice and easily as you go along. You'll know if you haven't done that properly or not, because what will happen is often you'll just have this vein gets warm and then this vein gets warm. Or alternatively, the water just shoots across the bottom and then back out the radiator and the hot takes absolutely ages to get hot. You'll also find that radiator manufacturers have different ways of diverting the water there. Sometimes it's already built in and you can't put your flap down. Sometimes you have to put a small rubber bung insert in as well. Again, I cannot stress how important it is to have a quick look at your instructions before you can continue putting in one of these radiators to make sure which way the flow should come in. Once your radiator is installed and you've got all the pipe work on, the next thing you need to do is actually nicely balance it out so it gets an adequate amount of flow from the system. Trade radiators have already done a video on how to balance out a heating system, but we can show you very quickly here the way you need to do it. Firstly, you need to switch your heating system on, turn the thermostat up and get everything working. Once you've fully bled out the radiator and got that all going, it's a good idea then to completely close the lock shield end of the valve. Then open up the TRV end fully and slowly then crack open the lock shield. Then leave it for about 15 minutes or 20 minutes to see how it heats up. If it doesn't heat up loads, then just give it another crack, but don't wind it fully open, okay? Once you've done that and you think you've got it up to a really good temperature, then really you should be finished balancing out the heating system. If you find out that putting a new vertical radiator made other radiators in the house get cool, then refer to our video on balancing out a heating system and that should see you right. Also, strangling down the lock shield on a vertical radiator can stop the often trickle noise that you get that sounds like water falling down a water because it reduces the flow whilst not actually affecting how hot the radiator gets. I hope you found today's video interesting and helpful and that it's helped you out when it comes to some of the problems associated with vertical radiators and I hope you'll come back and watch our next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.